strange tanks, Russian missile tanks of the 1930s through 1980s. What's up YouTube? This is J-Man Time and today I have a video on Russian missile tanks of the 1930s throughout the Cold War. During the 1930s, World War II and the Cold War, the Soviet Union attempted to design the perfect rocket tank or missile tank. This is basically a tank that used missiles as either an offensive or a defensive weapon. Throughout the Cold War, the Soviet Union expanded on this idea and actually managed to succeed in developing some missile tanks or tanks designed to destroy other enemy tanks using anti-tank missiles instead of their main guns. But on this list, I'll mostly be talking about tanks that never really made it. The failed Russian missile tanks or the Russian missile tanks that never made it past the prototype stage. So let's get into it. The first prototype missile tank designed by the Soviet Union was the RBT-5TT rocket tank. This tank, this prototype rocket tank was designed between 1932 and 1935. It was based off the BT-5 chassis. Its main armament consisted of one 45mm 20K main gun and two 430mm 300kg anti-personnel, anti-fortification rockets. Its armor thickness was between 6 and 13 millimeters and its speed was 72 kilometers an hour or 44.7 miles per hour. It had a crew of three. This is one of the stranger tanks designed by the Soviet Union in the 1930s. It's very interesting and strange for its time period. I mean look at those two giant rockets. These bad boys could easily wipe out infantry troops attempting to advance on a specific, a specific uh, area on the battlefield. This, these two rockets, or these two high explosive rockets, would also make very useful anti-fortification weapons. You know, for example, destroying trench systems, bunkers, machine gun nests, and so forth. But this tank never made it past the prototype stage. That's really it. The next tank, the next missile tank or rocket tank designed by the Soviet Union was the RBT-5 132mm PC-132. This experimental rocket tank was also based on the BT-5 chassis. This vehicle, like the previous vehicle, was also designed between 1932 and 1935. Its main armament was also a 145mm 20K main gun, but its rockets were reduced in size to two 132mm rockets firing a 4.9kg warhead. Its armor thickness and speed was pretty much the same as the previous prototype rocket tank. This vehicle was designed using a prototype system that will later be used in the Katusha rocket launchers used during the Second World War, except this system only could fire two rockets at a time. Unlike the previous tanks, these rockets wouldn't be all that useful. I mean, they could kill enemy infantry or maybe take out one machine gun nest or bunker, bunker, but keep in mind, rockets in the 1930s weren't all that accurate. And these were not tube launch rockets, so I would doubt they'd be on target. The next prototype rocket tank or missile firing tank was the Soviet BM-824 T-60. The BM-824 was pretty much just a multiple rocket launching light tank from 1941. This vehicle was built on the T-60 chassis. The T-60 was a Soviet light tank from that era. Its main armament was one rack of eight 82 millimeter rockets. Its armor thickness was seven to 20 millimeters and it had a speed of 44 kilometers per hour and it had a crew of two. This vehicle was not really all that advanced. I mean, it was basically just a Katusha light, you know. The Soviets already had enough Katusha rocket launchers, so it, this was kind of pointless, but the Soviets still went along with it. If you ask me, they should have just stuck with this T-60 by itself. 
but it is an interesting vehicle from the Second World War that most people don't know about when it comes to Soviet rocket technology and Soviet uh, um, anti-personnel uh, armor fighting vehicles from that era. So let's move on. The next rocket or missile tank design was the Object 282. The Object 282 was a prototype missile tank destroyer designed between 1957 and 1961. Its main armament was one 125mm D126 rocket main gun. Its armor thickness was between 30 and 150 millimeters and its speed was between 50 kilometers was 50 kilometers per hour or 31 miles per hour. It had a crew of four. Its secondary armament was four to nine anti-tank Ruby 22 Norris Boris guided anti-tank missiles or you know guided anti-tank missiles. Um, this vehicle was built on the T-54-55 chassis and it too never made it past the prototype stage. It looks pretty underdeveloped when compared to the next tank, the next experimental Soviet rocket tank on this list. And that is the IT-1 Drake gun or the IT-1 Drake gun. The IT-1 Drake gun was an experimental guided missile tank destroyer designed between 1964 and 1970. Unlike the previous tanks on this list, this did enter service in limited numbers. Its main armament was one 3M7 Drake gun pop-up anti-tank missile. Its armor thickness was between 31 and 153 millimeters and its speed was 50 kilometers an hour or 31 miles per hour. It had a crew of four. The Draken was, or Draken was one of the coolest looking Soviet rocket experimental or limited production anti-tank rocket tanks designed in the 1960s and 70s. This is literally my favorite Soviet tank, Soviet experimental tank of the Cold War. I only wish uh, the Soviets had mass produced this in larger numbers and issued it as maybe a third or fourth line tank after their T-54, 55, T-62, and T-70, and T-64 um, series of uh, main battle tanks. In the 1970s, the T-72 tank came out and pretty much replaced the latter tanks with the exception of the T-64. So, but the Drakon was just one of the cooler tanks that never got its place as a mainstay tank within the Soviet Red Army. It's kind of sad. I mean, just, I mean, just look at it. It just, it's so awkward and cool looking when compared to the, you know, the um, standard looking T-54 and T-62 and later T-72 class of main battle tanks. The next experimental Soviet rocket tank designed during the Cold War was the Object 287. The Object 287 was an experimental guided missile tank destroyer designed between the same time period as the as the um, Draken T-1 tank destroyer. Its main armament was one Typhon 9 M-15 pop-up wire-guided anti-tank missile. Its armor thickness was between 100 and 330 millimeters, and its speed was 50 kilometers an hour or 31 miles per hour. Unlike the Drake gun, this tank seems pretty underdeveloped too. I mean, this is basically just a simplified Drake gun, you know, or Drake gun. This is basically just um, the, the the dollar store Drake gun in terms of its. Um, design. It's in a sense, I guess you could say it's better than the Dragon. I mean, it has no turret, making it uh, harder to see from a distance. If you were a Nancy Tank crewman, or if you were a Nancy Tank gunner, you probably wouldn't be able to see this if it were hiding in some really tall foliage. You know. And if you look at the tank in the background, you know, you get what I'm saying. Keep in mind, 
anti-tank missiles are not allowed unlike the main gun or most battle tanks. So if this tank was able to hide correctly, it could easily sneak up and take out a few I don't know, M48 um, or M60 patents, no, you know, not to mention the numerous light tanks used by the NATO forces, which are easily destroyed by the main guns of most Soviet tanks anyway. Um, the next experimental or the next prototype missile tank designed by the Soviet Union was the Object 757. The Object 757 was a prototype missile, heavy missile tank destroyer designed between 1959 and 1961 for entering the heavy tank section. This vehicle was armed with one 125mm D-126C rocket main gun or a main gun that fired rocket shells rather than standard shells. It also was armed with four to nine Ruby anti-tank guided missiles or ATMGs. Its armor thickness was between 30 and 120 millimeters and its speed was 65 kilometers an hour or 35 miles per hour. It had a crew of three. This vehicle here or this monster, um, it reminds me of the IS-3 series of tank destroyers from the, the late period of the Second World War. But this vehicle fires um, rockets this gun, according to the Soviet archive, could fire both shells and rocket shells, or rocket assist ammunition, which are shells that have a small rocket fitted to the back of it, in order to give the shell greater range, and in some cases greater armor penetration, as some of these rocket shells were shape charged, like many of the uh, anti-tank weapons from the era, especially the anti-tank missiles. Um, this vehicle never made it past prototype stage either, but it was still cool looking and it just uh, it was just one of those tanks you wished had made it, but unfortunately that didn't happen. The next tank on the list is the Object 775, another prototype uh, missile slash rocket tank destroyer, except this one, was, this one was designed in 1962, just after the previous tank. Its main armament was the same 125mm D-126 rocket main gun. It also had 4 to 9, it also could carry 4 to 9 Ruby wire guided anti-tank missiles and it has had an armor thickness of 30 to 120mm and a speed of 50 kilometers an hour or 31 miles per hour. Like the previous tank, this vehicle also had a gun that could fire both shells and rockets, you know, at least according to Soviet archives. This is what I'm reading off of as I'm speaking to you, so it's not my, I'm, I'm not making this up, I'm just going by what the Russians say it could do. The difference between this, the difference between the Object 775 and the Object 757 is obviously the height and size. Object 775 is a much has a much lower silhouette and is lower to the ground than the previous tank. So this vehicle would have a lower silhouette when compared to the Object 757 if it had been adopted. This tank is cooler looking. If you if I had to choose, I would choose the Object 775 as my main uh, battle tank over the 757. You know, just because of the lower silhouette. You know, in tank warfare, you 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 don't want to be seen by the the uh, opposing tank. So a lower silhouette is a better idea, or is a good idea, especially during the Cold War, where anti-tank missiles were being mass produced. You know, like haywire, BGM tow uh, of 71. Those tow missiles. You know, you didn't want to. You didn't want to get spotted by one of those if you were a Soviet tanker. Um, the next prototype tank destroyer was a light uh, missile tank. This was the Object 96B. The Object 96B or the Object 906B was a prototype missile slash rocket amphibious light tank from 1963. This vehicle was armed 185mm D-58 rocket firing main gun or anti-tank missile firing main gun 
and it had an armor thickness of this armor was pretty low only about 12.7 to some sources state 120 millimeters i doubt that um, i'll say about 30 millimeters keep in mind this is based off the pt7 class of um, light tanks so the armor thickness is going to be really thin on these vehicles um, its crew was uh, its speed was 50 kilometers an hour or 31 miles per hour and it had a crew of four this is basically a PT-7 tank, or a, or if you're in China, a P-85 tank, a light tank, a light amphibious tank fitted with a rocket gun, or a rocket anti-tank gun, um, or an anti-tank rocket firing gun, you know, better way of saying it. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is like, this is just a PT-76 on steroids, you know. This vehicle, um, uh, well, it's pretty strange looking. Well, not looking. Pretty strange in terms of its armament. I mean, if I saw it, I wouldn't think that main gun could have the ability to fire anti-tank rockets. But it did. But unfortunately, this vehicle wasn't really, um, never really made it past the design stage. Towards the end of the Cold War and after the Cold War, the Soviet Union decided to go down the cheap route instead of designing a tank which fired anti-tank missiles they later went on to upgrade many of their subject 775 but unfortunately that didn't happen and in terms of world war ii era or pre-world war ii era i kind of do wish that rbt5 mentioned on at the beginning of the list you know the one with the two rockets of uh, the bt7 with two rockets and mounted on top that would have been a simple slash cheap or costless uh, anti-fortification weapon, you know. But unfortunately, that didn't happen either. So what do you all think about these vehicles? Please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time signing off. And if you have any other ideas for tanks or any countries you want me to do, in regards to tanks, please tell me in the comment section below. So, see ya.